We thought robots would come for the truck drivers and cashiers first, but the last few months of AI progress has shown quite the opposite. The threat of artificial intelligence technology could replace millions of jobs. This is replacing white collar jobs. Jobs lost as a result of artificial intelligence. However, this doesn't mean that human creativity is no longer needed. Instead, it suggests that humans will have to take on a more editorial and curatorial approach. We live in a world that is becoming more complicated and more crammed with information every day. There is a place for automation in every industry. We are now beginning to use the machines in entirely new ways on entirely different problems. And this is the exciting part. There is not a single person in the world that can make this pencil. It's only a piece of wood with a, something black in the middle and a little red tip at the end. What do you mean nobody knows how to make a pencil? You have to go to the Pacific Northwest probably and cut down some trees. How do you cut down some trees? You have to have some saws to cut it with. Where do you get the saws? You have to have some steel. Where do you get the steel? You have to have a steel mill. In order to have the steel mill, you have to get the iron ore, and you can add all the rest. So in order to know how to make a pencil, you would have to know everything there is to know about how to start from iron ore and coal and get iron and convert it into saws and cut down trees. He describes how the division of labor allows individuals to develop a greater level of skill and expertise. This shift allows humans to use their unique abilities, such as problem solving and decision making, to focus on more complex and fulfilling tasks. Humans have evolved to be more specialized. Workers are upgraded. The emphasis shifts from manual to mental skills. Automation conserves manpower a critical requirement as the demand for products grows far faster than the labor force. At every step of the way, technology has granted artists new tools to explore and express their creativity. But it's also provided fodder for critics to debate whether or not the technology has overstepped its bounds. Take photography, for example. Like any other art form, it's a medium which artists can express themselves and convey their ideas. Some people have been hesitant to call photography a true art because the camera is doing most of the work. This actually could be seen as a metaphor for AI generative artworks in which the computer is doing most of the work to create the art. However, it's important to recognize that the artist still plays a crucial role in photography and in AI generative art. In photography, the artist must compose the shot, choose the right lighting and settings and capture the image, the crop, the framing, and really find the right moment to create a compelling image. His most important tool is not his camera, but his eye. For the artist is first of all a selector, a searcher, He's a man who can search energetically and patiently, who has the integrity to search for what pleases him, not for what he thinks will please others. In AI generative art, the artist must design the parameters for the computer to generate the artwork and has to interpret and curate the final product. Thus, while the camera and the computer may play a significant role, it's actually the artist who ultimately determines the final result and imbues the work with their own creative vision and interpretation. When the iPhone brought high-end photography to a consumer market, it put one billion camera phones into the hands of the public. And of course, professional photographers were threatened. In a way, technology, or the democratization of technology, threatened their ability to be special in their market. Any 16-year-old with an iPhone and some creativity could produce high-end quality imagery. But it didn't make all one billion iPhone owners into professional photographers. It merely made it more of a challenge for photographers to refine their craft in a way that allowed them to break through the noise. The Library of Babel is a short story by the Argentine author and librarian Jorge Luis Borges, in which he describes a library that contains all possible 410-page books of a certain format and character set. The story is often cited as an example for the concept of infinity in literature and the idea of an overwhelming, all-encompassing library which contains every possible combination of letters, numbers, and punctuation marks, resulting in every possible book that ever could be written and has ever been written. In the context of AI generative art, the Library of Babel could be seen as a metaphor for the vast amount of data and information that is available to the AI algorithms, which they can use to generate original and creative works of art. Just as the books in the Library of Babel contain every possible combination of letters and punctuation marks, AI algorithms can draw on a seemingly endless amount of data and information to create new and interesting pieces of art. 
It's essentially the infinite monkey theorem. If there exists every possible combination of letters or pixels, the AI can generate every possible word sequence or visual. It's up to us monkeys on the keyboards to choose which of the infinite combinations is meaningful to us. And in this way, the AI can do most of the legwork and the humans can be relieved of the menial and repetitive steps of the process and just focus on curating and editing what the AI generates. So it's not that AI is coming to steal our jobs, it's just that our jobs are going to change. The best way to survive and thrive is to learn the tools and apply the thing that AI can't offer, which is human taste and curation. By taking on a more curatorial and editorial role, humans can ensure that the work produced aligns with their visions and values, resulting in a more authentic and meaningful final product. Anyone who makes anything can find opportunities to apply the principles of automation to his business.